Metals are everywhere. From the wires powering your devices to the steel supporting massive bridges. But what makes metal so strong, conductive and flexible? The answer lies in metallic bonding. In today's video we'll break down what metallic bonding is, compare it to ionic and covalent bonding and go through two IGCSE style exam questions. Let's get started! Unlike ionic or covalent bonding, metallic bonding is the attraction between positively charged metal ions and a sea of delocalized electrons surrounding it. This unique structure gives metals their key properties. Let's take a closer look. In a metal, atoms lose their outer electrons, forming positive metal ions arranged in a lattice structure. The lost electrons don't stay with one atom, instead they move freely throughout the entire structure, creating a so-called sea of free electrons. These delocalized electrons hold the metal ions together with a strong force of attraction. This special bonding structure explains why metals have these three important properties. High electrical conductivity. The free moving electrons allow metals to conduct electricity and heat easily. This is why copper is used in electrical wiring. Malleability and ductility. Metals can be bent, shaped and stretched without breaking. Their positive ions are arranged in layers that can slide over each other while still being held together by the sea of electrons. High melting and boiling points. The strong attraction between metal ions and the delocalized electrons requires a lot of energy to break, making metals solid at room temperature with high melting points. Now, how does metallic bonding compare to ionic and covalent bonding? Ionic bonding happens between metals and nonmetals, where electrons are transferred to form charged ions, like sodium chloride. It only conducts electricity when dissolved or molten. Covalent bonding happens between nonmetals, where electrons are shared, forming molecules like water. Most covalent compounds don't conduct electricity. Metallic bonding happens only between metals. Instead of transferring or sharing electrons, metals have a sea of delocalized electrons, making them great conductors in any state, which is why copper is used in wiring. For more information about ionic and covalent bonding, check out my videos. Now, let's test your understanding with two IGCSE style exam questions. Question 1. Why are metals good conductors of electricity? Pause the video and give it a try. The answer is, metals have delocalized electrons that are free to move and can carry electric charge throughout the structure. These electrons allow electricity to pass through easily. Question 2. Magnesium and sodium are both metals. Explain why magnesium has a higher melting point than sodium in terms of metallic bonding. Pause the video and give it a try. Magnesium forms Mg2 plus ions, while sodium forms Na plus ions. Since magnesium ions have a greater charge, they attract the delocalized electrons more strongly, creating stronger metallic bonds. As a result, more energy is needed to break the metallic bonds in magnesium, giving it a higher melting point than sodium. And that's it! You now understand metallic bonding and why metals are so strong and conductive. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next chemistry video. Also, check out our video on covalent bonding to compare bonding types in more detail. See you next time!